Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I wanted to show you how to make a knit, an easy knit cabled dishcloth. These are some of the very first cables that I've actually personally knitted and I really had a blast doing this. Um, these can look intimidating, but when you take it row by row, you will not believe how easy this is. This is an easy project. Um, if you're an absolute beginner knitter, you may want to actually check my um, homepage and in the search bar enter knit and I do have some simpler projects to start with for the very first time but if you're comfortable doing the knit and the purl stitch you should have no trouble with this you will however need a small cable needle that I will show you in just a minute okay if you have never been to my channel before I want to say welcome and definitely hit that subscribe button Thumbs up if you like this project and please hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the new things, either knit or crochet, that I have coming your way very soon. Let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using 100% cotton. This is a worsted weight cotton, some that I had in my stash. Um, I believe it's peaches and cream. Now, you don't need obviously this much. You can just get one of the smaller balls that are also available at any craft store and even Walmart stores. I'm going to be using knitting needles from my interchangeable set that I have from Knit Picks. If you're interested in these, there's a link below in the video description. And I'm going to be using size 7 or 4.5 millimeter. And I'm going to be using a wire with that since they are circular. Um, and for those of you who are brand new to knitting, um, the circular needles are really nice for me because I'm a crocheter and it just very much mimics the size of the crochet hook that I've grown used to for many years. Um, as far as the wire goes, this is actually longer than I need. Um, together from point all the way down to the wire to point is 32 inches. You can certainly make do with a much smaller one, 24 inches or even smaller than that 18 inch would probably be fine as well. Okay, I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose ends and a pair of sharp scissors for cutting the yarn. You will also need a cable needle of some sort. This is just one style, any style will do, but it needs to be a similar size to the actual knitting needle that we'll be using today. The first thing I'm going to do is pull off about a yard's worth of material. Go ahead and work the slip knot. I'm going to go ahead and do this again. Work a slip knot and then bring the yarn through the hole. Okay, place it on one of the knitting needles. Um, I am going to be using circular knitting needles like I mentioned, but if you don't have these, if you just have straight knitting needles, that's absolutely fine. Feel free to use that if that is if that's what you have. Um, it's not going to make a big difference. Okay, so now to begin, we're going to take the two strands. We're going to put our our pointer finger and our thumb in between the two strands like this. And we're going to do a long tail cast on. Um, this counts as one already, that slip knot. And we're going to go until we have 42 loops on our knitting needles. And this is how we cast on. Put the needle under the thumb and then over that strand and then pull. You want to pull somewhat tightly but not too tightly because you don't, if it's too tight then it's going to be pulled on this end. So just um, just kind of about, about like this. It should be able to slide back and forth without a problem. And we're going to do that again. And then pull. That's two. Okay, just be a little gentle, like I said. Don't want it to be too loose, but definitely don't want it overly tight. And another. And I'm going to do this until I have 42 loops on my knitting needle. So go ahead and work that. So let's go ahead and begin. We put our needle back in the back side under that first loop, wrap forward, pull up a loop and slide off the needle into the next one, wrap forward, pull up a loop, pull off. In the stitch, wrap forward, pull up a loop, 
and slide. And we just do this all the way across. Working with the cotton yarn is a lot stiffer than let's say working with wool. Um, being a long time crocheter, I totally understand now why knitters are in love with wool is because wool has a stretchability and a bounce back to it, which makes it very easy to stick these needles in and do what I'm doing. Um, the cotton is going to be a little bit stiffer. Okay, it's not as forgiving, but it will yield a lovely, lovely washcloth that you're going to want to go to. And go ahead and reposition my yarn so it's a little bit closer. There we go. Let's try that one again. See, I'm even having a little bit of struggle with the cotton. So if you do too, don't don't worry about it. You'll get used to it. And the first row, like I'm doing here, is usually the hardest. Just getting started. Um, once you get a couple rows down, it goes a lot smoother, I promise you. So go ahead and finish knitting each of these off that first row. I wanted to show you the last two stitches just in case some of you are brand new to knitting. I just wanted to give you every step of the way if I possibly can. Okay, and you just knit them completely off. Okay, just like that. And let me show you what I have. Okay, now it's time to turn. So that's one row down, seven to go. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to repeat that seven more times. So I'm going to start the next row and I just want to show you just how much easier the successive roads are. Well, <laughs> third time is the charm. There we go. Again, the stiffness of the cotton um, may, you know, be, may be a little more of a challenge, but once you get going, um, I, I think you do get used to it. Okay, so go ahead and do this until you have eight completed rows. After working eight rows of the knit stitch, your piece should look something like this. Okay, now we're going to work row nine, which is going to begin um, working on the cabling pattern. Okay, so now we're going to start and we're going to first knit the first six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. After we knit six, we are going to purl six. Okay, for the purl, for those of you who have never seen this before, we bring the yarn forward in front of this needle back here, and we stick our needle coming towards us in the loop this way, and then we place the yarn in between the two needles, and then bring the loop like this, and then off. So we're going to do this, once I get some extra yarn here, we're going to do this six times, so that's one, two, put the yarn through the needles, three, four, five, and six. After that, we bring the yarn back behind and we do knit six. So we're going to knit six always start with a knit six on this particular row. Then we purl six and then we knit six more. So we have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And we're going to, then we go back to six purl. But let me just take a minute to show you in case you're not familiar with the way this works. I just wanted to show you that when you knit a stitch, it's going to look like this. But on the purl stitch, you're going to see the little nub in front. Okay. I know it's a little tricky to get used to seeing this, but once you get used 
to doing this a few times, you can recognize, see, these are knit stitches. You see the little, the little knit thing there, and then a little, little bump there for the purl. So now I'm going to go ahead and purl six more, knit six more, and do that all the way across, alternating knit six knits and then six purls, and you're going to end with six knit stitches at the end of this row. For row 10, we are just simply going to knit each stitch all the way across. So go ahead and work that knitting all the way across. At the end of row 10, you should be able to see where the three cables are forming, okay? Or where the, the columns are, the bases for these cables. One here, one here, and here. And when you see these knit stitches forming like that, that is going to be our front side. Okay, so now what I want you to do is repeat rows 9 and 10 one more time, and I'll just get you started on this. So row 9, remember, we are always start with a knit on all of our rows. We're going to knit 6 times and then purl 6 times all the way across, ending with 6 knit stitches. And for row 10, we simply knit every stitch all the way across. So go ahead and finish those. This is what you should have after we completed row number 13. Now we're going to begin row 14. And do make sure that you see the front side facing with the knitted stitches here, because this is the row where we're going to cross our cables and do make sure that you have your cable needle, or I'm sorry, yeah, your cable needle handy. We are going to begin by knitting the first six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, after we've knitted those six stitches, we have our cable fun here. And what well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the three, the next three stitches off our needle and put them onto, let's go ahead and slide them off there, onto the cable. Now you do need to be careful if you're using this style of a cable needle because it's easy for them to slip out. So you do need to be careful, be mindful that they can fall out. Just make sure you keep an eye on that. Now we are going to knit the next three stitches that are all still on our needle here. One, two, three. Now we're going to bring our yarn forward and we're going to now knit the three stitches that we pulled off. It's going to be a little tricky at first and it's going to be a little bit tighter, but don't let that bother you. This will all settle out. So we are going to knit the next, like I said, a little tricky. Okay, one, two, and three. And that's pretty much it. Now we put this needle aside until we come to the next cable. And so let's just take a look. See how we just did that? It is crossed. It looks good. So now we're going to knit the next six stitches. One, two, three. I'm sorry, I'm so slow here. Four. Five and six, and then we're going to do it again. I'm going to show you the next one. I'm going to repeat what I just did, and I'm going to just um, leave that last one. Okay, so first we're going to take and slip three stitches off one, two, three, just like we did before, and put it on our little needle, little cable needle here. Now we're going to knit the next three stitches. Uh, come on, needle, get out of the way. Okay, so that's one, 
two, three, and now we're ready to set this aside and come back to the three stitches that we pulled off. Uh, we also have to bring our yarn with us. That helps quite a bit. And then knit these three. One, two, and three. Let's try that one. Let's try that one again. Three. There you go. Like I said, there are other cable needles on the market that you can also check out. I'm not convinced that's the easiest one to use, um, but it is adequate. Okay, so then we do six more knit stitches. I'll just go ahead and talk through this. Six more knit stitches. And then we again, when we get to these six stitches, we're going to take these three off. I'm going to knit these three and then these three. That should be on the cable needle. And then knit the last six stitches and that will finish out the row. So go ahead and finish that out. This is what your washcloth should look like. And you're going to like this one. This is very similar. Actually, it's a repeat of row number nine. So I'm going to go ahead and start this with you. This is the row where we knit six, purl six, knit six, purl six, all the way across, and then we knit the last six at the end of the row. So go ahead and work. Well, I'll go ahead and do the first 12 stitches with you. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. That's six knit stitches. And also just wanted to mention that it might be a little on the tighter side after you've worked this cable crossing, but that's okay. Just go ahead and work, and then work six purl. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So go ahead and work a repeat of row nine all the way across. Row 16, you're going to like this one. It's knit every stitch all the way across. So go ahead and work that knit stitch just straight across. Now we're going to turn and I'm going to give you a few rows to work. We're going to work rows 17 through 21. That's five more rows and this is how we're going to work those. Five more rows and then after you complete that it'll be time for us to cross the cables again. So go ahead and complete those five rows. After this you're going to need to go back and repeat starting with row 14, which is the row in which we cross the cables, again, with the front side facing. So you're going to work rows 14 through 21 four more times. If you need stitch support, you can look at the bottom of the screen. I'll have a time mark listed down there where you can easily go back to row 14 and begin watching again and just continue to repeat that. Uh, four more times or until the cloth is one inch or so from the height in which you want your dishcloth to be. Okay, so if you want a longer dishcloth, you can certainly just add an additional cable or two. Um, but I'm going to add four more and then I will show you how to complete working from that point. And this is what you should have. I hope you're really enjoying these cables. Okay, now the only thing we need to do is we need to work eight more rows of just the knit stitch each row so that it matches what we did at the very beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and start you off and this is with the back side facing as we begin these rows. So we're simply going to get to the end of the needle here. Just work the knit stitch all the way across the row and work eight rows of these and then I'll show you how to bind off. After working those eight rows of knit, this is what the top should look like. And now the only thing left to do is to bind off the last row. We're going to do that by knitting 
knit two, and then we bring this stitch over, and you want to try to try to work this off on the loose looser side so that it's not too tight. Knit another one off. And slip it over just like that. So go ahead and do this all the way across and I will show you the last step. After working that all the way across, go ahead and pull it through one more loop. And go ahead and give it a clip and pull that on through. Okay, and so let's take a look at what we have. We still have a couple strands to hide, but this is our knitted dishcloth with the cables. I love it. All right, so now I'm going to show you just a very quick tutorial on how to quickly hide these loose strands. There are many different ways to do this. Um, and since this is not a, you know, a real fine garment, it's not as important, I guess, in how these are hidden. But let me go ahead and just show you. I'm going to just hide inside the like colored yarn area. Okay, so that brings that down. And then just working under these next stitches. And then I'm going to do this a couple more times. Yeah, I think I may just stop it there. Okay, so now what I want to do is clip this very close, but not too close. There we go. And that strand is sufficiently hidden. I just have one more strand to hide and then I will be all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the easy cable knit dishcloth with me today. If so, make sure that you subscribe and don't forget the thumbs up and the notification bell. I know it's a lot of admin, but that really would keep the good projects coming at you. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. God bless. Bye-bye.